Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all once again. In the most blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ this evening. Trusting in the Lord, today I am going to present you a beautiful devotional message from the epistle to Philippians written by Apostle Paul. As we all know, Apostle Paul was present in Rome. And after Acts chapter 20, uh, 1, 21, that we see him, being bound by the Spirit of God, he was taken to Jerusalem. And from thence he was arrested and was transported to the Roman Empire. He was trialed before two, three authorities before he called on the higher authority of the Roman Empire Caesar. <clears throat> However, Paul was imprisoned and uh, the church at Philippi, which was already founded by Apostle Paul, they came to know their dear servant of the Lord was already arrested and was put in the jail. And he was in a dire need of having some financial assistance. They took a collection as an assembly and sent the money with one of the active saints of the congregation whose name was Epaphras. He went in there to Rome and visited Apostle Paul in the prison and served him and stayed with him for some time. And as he continued there, he became ill and was at the point of death. When Ephesus came to Rome, Apostle Paul had sought the well-being of the saints in Philippi. He reported him, the saints were rejoicing in the Lord amidst all the sufferings and of the uh, desertion of Apostle Paul from the congregation itself. We all know that in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas together they visited the city of Philippi and there he worked and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a result, three people were converted to Christianity. The first convert at the city of Philippi was Lydia, the the, mer uh, the merchant of purple in that marketplace. We read that the Holy Spirit of God opened her heart to listen and to understand the message which was presented by Apostle Paul and his company. Then she received the Lord Jesus Christ into her heart and uh, counted them faithful in the Lord. She invited the apostles to her house and they started the assembly at that place. Consequently, we also read the Philippian jailer and his family was converted and eventually a, a woman, woman of divination who was also known as a Devadasi woman who too who accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ and was added to the congregation which was founded in Philippi. Though the assembly was a very small assembly in its beginning, the believers were very much happy and joyful in their uh, life because they accepted the joy of the Lord into their life. And after ministering for some time, Paul was transported to Roman Empire and was thrown in the, the prison there. When Ephesus came to him, he explained him every bit of information <clears throat> about the local assembly to encourage them of their spiritual fellowship, to cultivate their love between the believers and to strengthen them in their faith. Paul had to write down this small epistle which has got only four chapters and the same, sent same with Ephesus, who came to him and became 
became uh, an ill person for some time some point of a uh, time that he he had no expectation that he would live anymore and paul himself was very much painful about his life but we read that god intervened the situation and healed his servant and uh, sent him back with much health and he brought this epistle to the assembly at philippi so when paul was exhorting the saints over philippi in chapter 2 verse 5 he tells them let the mind be in you which was also in christ jesus let the mind be in you which was also in christ jesus so the central theme of this book is the mind of christ that is the particular terminology the spirit of god has picked out to show us what should be the mind of a christian believer who follow the lord jesus christ and his commands here when paul has devi- uh, writing this paul was writing this epistle to the saints over there basing on this particular term that is mind he has divided the four chapters into four different perspectives chapter 1 he is dealing with single mind chapter 2 he is speaking about samasi mind chapter 3 he talks about the spiritual mind and in chapter 4 he is talking about the satisfied mind so precisely i can say it single mind samasi mind spiritual mind and satisfied mind these are the four faces of the christian mind which paul has uh, uh, shown here in this short epistles so let me explain a little bit about it here in this book this epistle paul is actually using the word fellowship several times and in spite of the difficult circumstances in which he was paul was rejoicing he repeatedly tells the believers who read these epistles rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice so when he had the secret of the single mind which the jesus christ had he lives for christ and the gospel christ is named 18 times in these four chapters totally in these four chapters christ is named 18 times and the gospel is uh, named uh, 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 named more than many times christ and the gospel are the most important subject which paul, paul has mentioned here in this book he says in philippians 1:21 for to me to live is christ and die is gain the scholars of the bible has opinion <laughs> that this has been the philosophy of apostle paul <coughs> he says for to me to live is christ and to die is gain christ is named 18 times in philippians and the gospel of jesus christ is mentioned six times in this book so by which we understand the importance that paul gave for the lord jesus christ and the gospel in his life and in spite of his difficult circumstances paul rejoiced in the lord jesus christ because his circumstances strengthened the fellowship of the gospel paul says here when the believers are having the single mind they will have three essentialities in relation to the gospel of jesus christ number 1 the fellowship of the gospel number 2 the furtherance of the gospel and number 3 the faith of the gospel in philippians 1 1 to 11 paul is speaking about the fellowship of the gospel then verse number 12 to 26 is dealing with the furtherance of the gospels and then verses 27 to 30 he is also speaking about 
the faith of the gospel so listen here the order in which that he presents the gospel in relation to the single mindedness he says that when we have the single mind we will have the fellowship of the gospel we will have the partnership in the furtherance of the gospel and also we will hold the faith of the gospel these three are very important points to discuss about when we are studying about these things the word fellowship in the new testament simply means to have in common to have in common but true christian fellowship is actually much deeper than sharing uh, something that we have rather it is the fellowship really uh, one uh, one acquainted with the lord jesus christ and uh, you cannot have fellowship with uh, someone unless you have something in common we cannot cultivate fellowship with someone unless we have something in common and for christian fellowship this means possessing of eternal life every born again believer has possessed eternal life something as a common factor that means people irrespective of their nationality languages culture and background every one one has possessed the eternal life having trusted the lord jesus christ so this is something that we have in common for christian fellowship this means eternal life sharing common each heart unless a person has trusted jesus christ as his savior he knows nothing of the fellowship so if you want to know something about the meaning of the fellowship the primary requirement is that the person has to receive the lord jesus christ as his own personal savior and lord so in philippians 2:1 paul writes about the gospel philippians chapter 2 verse 1 he is speaking about the gospel of jesus christ it is the gospel of jesus christ which the regenerated the sinner to have the fellowship with god the father son and the holy spirit and also with the believers who have possessed the eternal life through jesus christ our lord so we understand that there is the fellowship of his suffering that means fellowship of what fellowship number one post fellowship of, in, in his eternal life that which he has given us fellowship of the gospel and then he also speaks about christians fellowship in the sufferings and moreover when we share that we have with others whatever we have when we share it with others this is also a kind of fellowship that paul says in chapter 4 verse 15 so his emphasis in this first first part is when a christian believer is having the single mind which is the mind of jesus christ he will he will have what fellowship of the gospel and he will have the partnership in the furtherance of the gospel and also he will have kept the faith of the gospel so the gospel therefore he is mentioning about more than six times and christ the 18 times in this small epistles so here we know that uh, even though P- uh, paul was in a prison roman prison still he was having that greater fellowship with his son jesus christ in that such a situation he sought that he he engraved that fellowship with the saints between uh, the, the between the church in philippia paul uses three thoughts in philippians 1 1 to 11 the, those three thoughts are actually that describes the two christian fellowship uh, these three spiritual thoughts describe the true sp- christian fellowship what is that ha- i have you in my mind philippians 1 3 to 6 paul says i have you philippians in my mind and then he says i have you in my heart philippians 1 7 to 8 then thirdly i have you in my prayers what a Uh, de- uh, dearly thoughts that paul is reflecting here in relation to the fellowship that he was discussing about he uses his three thoughts in philippians 1:11 what is that i have you in my mind he says even though i am here imprisoned in 
Roman uh, Roman prison but i have you saints in my mind that means he was always remembering them in his mind and secondly he says i have you in my heart not only i have you in my mind i have kept you in my heart and then he says i have you in my prayers he was always praying for those saints in philippia see chapter 1 is actually he is speaking about the fellowship of the gospel the furtherance of the gospel and the faith of the gospel so much is there to explain in regards to this but uh, because of the laxity of time i am stepping into the second chapter our concern is just mentioning the four mind which paul is uh, speaking in each of these chapters of the epistle to the philippians in chapter 1 he says about a single mind when a christian believer is having the single mind that he love the fellowship of the gospel and the furtherance of the gospel and the faith of the gospel in chapter 2 he is talking about submissive mind submissive mind is most essential for christians so submissive mind is uh, most essential and every christian have to have that submissiveness in the will of god chapter 2 paul is talking about the four different examples uh, for the submissive mind a christian ought to have the first example is christ himself when he explains from chapter 2 verse 5 onwards he says who being in the form of god thought it not robbery thought it not to be robbery with god but he condescended to take the form of a man even the form of a servant and he was even obedient unto death you know when jesus christ was willing to come down to this world to save us from sins that he was condescended to take the form of a man even the form of a servant the best example for the submissive mind is none but christ himself we know that when jesus christ instituted the last lord supper at the upper chamber in jerusalem with his disciples before he instituting that uh, that uh, this uh, commemoration of his death uh, burial and resurrection that he t- took a uh, you know a, a vessel of water in his hand and tying around his waist a, 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 a towel he approached each of the disciples and began to wash their feet it was at these circumstances peter denied that christ, saying christ that you should not wash me but rather i should wash your feet then jesus said that if i do not wash you you will have no partnership with me that means no fellowship with me see here the lord taught the disciples a greater and deeper lesson what was it he said that he was their master and he was their lord he said that i am your master and your lord if i have washed your feet you wash each other the feet that means it is not literally the putting that we have to wash each, each other the brethren uh, the feet it is not the literally like that but christ is showing us an example as to what is samasi mind anyone who thinks that he is the boss or he is the manager or he is the guru or he is the master he should uh, uh so he in sublime submission he has to humble himself to the grace of god and to serve one another was the example that jesus had shown to his disciples so watching the feet of his disciple means willing to be doing the service of a servant so we are god's servants we should be willing to serve the lord and serve our brethren christ is the first and the best example for christian submission so in the early part of chapter 2 paul is talking about uh, the best example for the christian submission is jesus christ and secondly paul is talking about the second example that he himself paul himself is the second example for the the submissive mind and herein he says that he was ready to offer up his body as a martyr to keep about the faith of the saints at philippi and he says there and for your sake 
that I am, I am ready, ready, even ready to shed my blood on to the sacrifice of your faith. That means he was willing to die for the saints at Philippi. That much he loved them. So he, because he followed the mind of Christ, he adopted the mind of Christ in his service. When he adopted the mind of Christ in his service, he was willing and was ready to offer up himself as a sacrifice for the faith of the saints in Philippi. He says, I am ready to shed my blood for your faith as a sacrifice, a seed server sacrifice. So Paul is the second example for the Samasi mind. Third comes Paul's, Paul's disciples and companion, Timothy. And he says in the following verses that many they look on to their own things. Many they look on to their own affairs. But this boy, this man, he was serving the Lord and serving the Apostle Paul as a son to the Father. He never sought self-glory. He never sought self self-exaltation. He never respected any anything because of his service to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was willingly serving the Lord with Apostle Paul, not looking on to his own self, but the things of the Lord Jesus Christ. He commended him here and saying, he is a good servant, a, an exemplary servant of Christ in the kingdom service. And then fourthly, he mentions about yeah, Ephesus. And when he speaks about Ephesus, he makes five mentions there. All of those are found here in these verses. He says, he is my brother. And my companion, he is my brother. My companion, my fellow prisoner or laborer in the kingdom service. And the one who comforted me in my suffering. And uh, the one who loves the kingdom of God. What a, what a great appreciation that Paul had of Ephesus when he commends him here in so thus he presenting four beautiful examples for a submissive mind. The Lord Jesus Christ first, and secondly, Apostle Paul himself. Thirdly, Timothy who followed the Apostle in the service of God. And fourthly, Ephesus who was sent from Philippian church to Rome to serve the servant of the Lord in his difficult situations. And thirdly, when we comes to in the third chapter, Apostle Paul says, speaks about the spiritual mind. What is the spiritual mind? Two signs are given here and two warnings are also given. What are the warnings? He says, beware of dogs and beware of the evil doers. Beware of dogs and beware of the evil doers. Paul is mentioning here uh, the dogs. He is speaking about the dogs to be, that we should be careful about. What is that in, in modern houses in Kerala? We see big houses people who are built and in front of which there will be a great gate, a big gate and upon which we will read a placard hanging down. What is that? The dog is inside. Beware of dog. Dog is inside. Barking and biting dogs are kept inside. If somebody without any information, they voluntarily go into the gate, they will be bitten by the dogs with their sharpened tooth. You understand? So the owner of the house has already hung there a placard with, which reads that beware of dogs. That means dogs are kept inside. Not only the barking dogs, but the biting dogs. Very dangerous dogs are there. So Paul addresses the people here, beware of dogs. Who is, uh, he is implying? He is speaking about those Judaizers who infiltrated into the assemblies of Asia Minor from Judea, who taught the law of Moses along with, he mixed the law of Moses along with the grace of God. He, Paul says them, be careful about those people. And they are evil doers. They are trying to mix, mess up the grace with the law of Moses. They used to teach the new believers that the grace alone is not sufficient to save a sinner. Rather, they insisted those believed people to practice circumcision according to the law of Moses. So they trusted in the flesh. So Paul says, we are the spiritual minded people. What are, the, what are we doing? We never trust in the flesh. 
and we never go after the law of Moses. Rather, we are worshiping God in the spirit. What the what the Lord Jesus Christ said to Samaritan woman, John's Gospel, chapter four, verse twenty-four: uh, "They that God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth." So, in chapter three, Paul is dealing with spiritual mind, and then chapter four, he is talking about satisfied mind. I will close the video very soon without much giving you much, much explanation. We know in the fourth chapter. Paul is giving thanks, or Paul is giving thanks to the saints at Philippi for the gift that he had received of them through Epaphras, who was sent from the assembly to Rome. Having received, accepted this gift from the hands of Epaphras, here Paul is uh, giving them a thanks note. He says, "What you have deported uh, through Epaphras, I have received as a sweet savor offering." Now I have everything I wanted. Now I have everything I wanted. You listen here. When he says that I have everything and I am contented with, he had nothing. And he in in the in his like second letter to Timothy, he is instructing Timothy to send Mark to him. He says Mark is profitable to me. Send him uh, before the beginning of the winter season, and when he comes. Remind him to to collect that blanket and the parchment which I have kept at Troas, at the house of house of what the one of the Christians, you know, Carpus Carpus, one of the Christians in Troas. He had even kept his blanket and parchment there. That too was not in with him in the prison. In that winter season, he is begging to Timothy to send Mark to him, and when he is coming, that a. Uh, Let him carry his parchment as well as his blanket. He reminds him. Those things were also not with with him at that time when he said that I am contented with the what's over the situation I am. Now I have everything, and I have received the gift which you have sent through Ephesus as a seed saver offering to God. You understand? He was a satisfied man because he was he had a single mind. So let me close down here. When a Christian is having the single mind, which is the mind of Jesus Christ, he will have the fellowship of the gospel. He will have the furtherance of the gospel, and he will have kept the faith of the gospel. And when he has the single mind, he will have also the submissive mind, and he will also have the spiritual mind, and finally he will also have a satisfied mind. Let us examine ourselves whether. do we have the single mind which is of the lord jesus christ let us examine ourselves if you do not have it let us cultivate the single mindness a submissive mindness a spiritual mindness and satis- satis- satisfied mindness in the days coming as we continue to live for christ and his kingdom may his name be glorified thank you thank you